I was going down for the last time and no one heard my cry my voice was quickly fading I was drifting with the tide when a hand from out of nowhere gently reached for mine and I thank God he found me just in time just before the winds of sorrow had rocked my soul to sleep just before the angry billows had pulled me out God knows how long I drifted when I saw the old lifeline and I thank God he found me just in You know, I don't remember drifting Cause pleasure rode with me When careless winds start blowing You can drift so easily and storms make no exception and friend i've sure had mine but i thank god he found me just in time just before the wind of sorrow had rocked my soul to sleep just before those angry billows had pulled me out to deep God knows how long I drifted when I saw the old lifeline and I thank God he found me just in time and I thank God he found me just in Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us as your word tells us. Please hold us close during our trials. God's love does not keep us from trials, but sees us through them, end quote. And the Lord woke me up with two words on my heart, and that was, if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3. And the quote that I gave will be applicable, I hope, and you'll see this applicability by the end of the message, if I do it right. Ephesians chapter 3, we'll begin reading at chapter, or verse 14, that's Ephesians 3 and 14. 
may be a very familiar scripture for most of you. I know it's familiar for me in my household, especially for me, because this is one of the prayers that Michelle had prayed for me for many, many years. Ephesians 3.14 says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful, Wayne, for the words that you put on the sign out there that say, If you want to lift your soul, then bend your knees. How applicable is that? For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ which path this knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that I am about to deliver. I thank you for the word that we have just read. I thank you, Lord, for the songs that we have sung. And I thank you for the sweet spirit of Sunday school. I thank you that the people have joined together here today. And now, Lord, I look forward with anticipation and expectation what you are going to do with that word. As we have come open-minded and we come with our hearts rejoicing and in one accord to simply worship you in your name, Lord, we ask that you would give us insight today that you would open our minds to understand and our hearts to receive and our ears to comprehend that which you would have us know today. I pray I do it right and by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. I want to focus on those two words that the Lord gave me and they are rooted and grounded. He woke me up and I simply heard those two words, rooted and grounded. So I began my study. Rooted comes from a Greek word that means to root. And it comes from another Greek word that means root. <laughs> Pretty profound, wouldn't you say? Root means root or to root. My English teacher would have a nightmare. She would have a fit if she heard me because she told me, Mr. Albright, you cannot define a word with its word. She'd say, what does hot mean? I'd say hot. She'd say, no, give me something else. So here we have it. The Bible itself in the concordance that I read. If you don't believe me, look it up. It's in the Strong's Concordance. It's, it's number 4491. And its meaning of rooted is root. You can't get, Well, let me, let me put it in perspective because I then searched out the scriptures that use that word rooted. They are, the, lax is la the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Another says, and because they had no root, they withered away. Yet he hath no root in himself, but he endureth for a while. Five more. They saw the fig tree dried up from the root. If the root be holy, so are the branches. There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Least any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Another one. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. And the last one says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. But listen to this, after hearing the scriptures whereby this word root is used, listen to how Webster's Dictionary defines this same word. The usually underground part of a plant body that originates from a seed and functions as an organ of absorption, aeration, and food storage or as a means of anchorage and support. And it differs from a stem of the plant body. Did you hear that? It doesn't matter if you did, because I'm going to repeat it anyway. Because I want you to think of this in an allegorical sense. I want you to listen to this definition in a symbolic way of the seed that has been placed in each and every one of our hearts as Christians 
the seed and the root that establishes our faith and our hope and our love. Think of it this way. Your relationship to Jesus Christ rooted the usually underground part of a plant body that originates from a seed. That seed has been planted in every man's heart. It originates from a seed. And it functions as the organ of absorption and aeration and food storage. Is Jesus Christ that to you? Are you rooted in him to that degree? And does he have a means of anchorage and support? And does it differ from the stem of the plant body? Such a wonderful definition, especially if you think of it in the figurative sense. And it gets even better when you correlate it back. And let me give you a scripture that I think just goes right along with that definition. It's Colossians 2 and 6 through 10. Think of this as that root. Is it that underground part where you get the food and the nourishment for your soul? Is it that place of stability? It says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. I did that this morning, didn't I? We sat at the table, and most prayers are pretty simple. Lord, thank you for this food that we're about to eat, and you just go on about your way. But I just said, thank you, Lord, and I said all the things that I'm thankful for. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught according therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power being rooted. Do you see that? Being rooted in Christ. The underground part of a seed that grows into that root. And that root then serves as the main source of nourishment and stability. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you and you and you and you, 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 and me may be rooted and grounded. Let's focus on that word grounded. This word grounded comes from three words. The first is simply means to lay a basis. Literally, it means to erect as in a building. You ever played with those erector sets when you were a kid? You built something, it's erected. Anyway, that word comes from another word, and that means something put down as in a substructure of a building. And that word then comes from another word that means to place in a horizontal posture. So the complete meaning of this word grounded has this, means this. It's a substructure that serves as the basis for something to be erected or built. And when completed, will be placed in a horizontal posture across the ground as a firm foundation that can be built on. Grounded. I'm sure many of you were grounded in growing up. This is not that same punishment. This grounded I'm talking about is a good thing. Of course, grounded, I guess, as the mom or dad would do it, is done in a good manner. But to be grounded means firm-footed, to be grounded. And not just firm-footed because you're standing on a piece of soil. I mean firm-footed because it's been erected and built for that very purpose. That says all things can happen around me, but I'm standing on something firm. And then not only am I grounded, but then the roots go down deep and they nourish and they establish and they strengthen to be rooted and grounded. Now, again, that word grounded, in the King James Version, it also translates it this way. It's the same word, but you'll find it in different contexts. And you'll see that same word translated as founded, foundation, and settle. Because my Bible says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded. That's that same word, ground, upon a rock. 
And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation. That's that same word, grounded the earth. Another one says, the peace of all, I'm sorry, the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that you have suffered a while. That scripture could preach in and of itself. After you have suffered a while, that's why you must be rooted and grounded. For after that you have suffered a while, it make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle, or ground you. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you, being rooted and grounded, that's grown from a seed, nourished from, established by, and upheld through the root. That you, being rooted and grounded, that is a foundation erected in your heart, laid out before you your very life through Christ Jesus, whereby it serves as the basis to perfect establish, strengthen, and settle you. That you, being rooted and grounded in love. It's important that you add that other piece in love because you can be rooted and grounded. I know some of us go rooting around. That's not what I'm talking about because we can be rooted. And some of us have been grounded. I'm not talking about that. Airline pilots have been grounded, and that's a bad thing. I'm talking about strengthening and an establishing and perfecting of your faith in love. And the question that I had then is why? Why must you be strengthened and rooted and grounded in love? Because if you're not rooted and grounded in love, you will be rooted and grounded in something. You will be rooted and grounded through something. The way that you're raised determines what your root looks like. The way that you live your life determines the ground in which you're going to establish. You will be rooted and grounded in something. God challenges us, encourages us, if not even commands us to be rooted and grounded in love. In love. And that word love is agape here. That's a love that goes beyond. It simply means much affection. See, I can say I love you without much affection. Then I'd have phileo love. But to have agape love. That's the kind of love he wants you to be rooted and grounded in. When we first got married, I was rooted and grounded in filial love. I would tell her almost every day, Michelle, I love you. You know what she said to me? Most of you know this. She said, I am sick and tired of you telling me you love me. Shock you? Because she then said, I want you to show me you love me. Stop telling me about it and show it to me. That's agape love. To be rooted and grounded in love. But for a reason. Because you can't, you have to have a reason why you want to be rooted and grounded in love. Because when you read on, Ephesians 18 says that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. The theme today that I have seen knows this, that troubles and trials will come your way. And if you are rooted and grounded in your own way, you're going to react wrong when that trial comes. But when you're rooted and grounded in love, then you are able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, how far across does his love go. And then the width, how deep how far over because when you're able to comprehend that it doesn't matter what hell throws your way it doesn't matter because you are not going to be shaken if you are rooted and grounded in love when I came home from the storms I come down 96 and I saw all the trees that were uprooted and blown over those that had strong roots you know what happened the tops of them got snapped off but their roots were grounded so tight that they couldn't pull them out of the ground. That's what he wants from you. Rooted and grounded in love. And what that tells me then, even in applicability today, he's going to try to chop that top off. Remember we said last week, your head's on a chopping block. Because you are to be rooted and grounded. No, let me restate, let me restate that. You are rooted and grounded in something. 
I pray that you be rooted and grounded in the love of Jesus Christ so that when the dam breaks and the hell comes flowing at you, God can raise that standard up because you are firmly rooted and grounded in love. And then you can look back and you can see all the trials and all the troubles and all the issues, and then you go, wait, I comprehend. He said that you would comprehend with all the saints. What is that breadth and the length and the depth and the height of his love towards us? Because when you understand that kind of love, you know what that simply says? His love is immeasurable. Immeasurable. If you were to try to comprehend the length, immeasurable. You know, he measured the city. How many was that song go? Four by four, and he measured the city. He could measure that his love for us is unmeasurable. It's almost incomprehensible. But if you are firmly, Wayne and Faith, if you would come, if you are firmly rooted and grounded in what? Love. In his love for us. Rooted and grounded. In fact, if you would allow me, let me paraphrase Romans 5 and 8. It says, in our darkest hour, God loved us. In our darkest hour, God loves us to be rooted and grounded in his love. Four o eight this morning. and sing those thing that start with the first. Well, that's a good place to start, isn't it? The first verse. Uh, How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in His excellent word. Sing it with me this morning. Here we go. How firm a foundation, ye saints. Of the Lord is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said? I have one more scripture to read because I believe it puts it in perspective. If you can be rooted and grounded in his love. Yes. Because Romans 8 and 35 says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Actually, it's the love of Christ, the scripture says, but it's the same for me. You know what he's saying? Somebody's going to try to separate you. You know what he's saying? Somebody's going to try to rip that love out of your heart. So he encourages you and I. He said, what can separate us then from the love of Christ? Yes, yes, yes. Shall tribulation or distress, persecution or famine, nakedness, peril or sword, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? You can't say that, folks, if you are not rooted yeah. and grounded in his love. Amen. Yeah. Because he says, as it was written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long, and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither depth nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 That you would be rooted and grounded in his love because he says that we would then be able to comprehend 
the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. Because then in Romans, he just told us, shall that depth and that distance and that span, shall that separate us? No, because we are able to comprehend his love for you is immeasurable. I'm going to say these words to a song. And yes, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm just reminded. I'm going to share this with you. I love to pray, and I was praying here early this morning. And my prayer was this. God, I want to see you. That's been my prayer for a long time. I prayed that in California, that I may see God. And he showed me himself true through words written in the rock. I prayed that prayer again this morning. Lord, I want to see you. <laughs> Albert Trevino. Six o'clock this morning on his way to work, said, I saw the truck and I wanted to come pray with you. Wow. He stopped in here and we prayed together. And when he left, I was reminded then that I said, God, may I see you. And he spoke to me and he said, if you've done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. Amen. Albert Trevino in his soiled pants and his old truck if you've done it under the least of these you've done it under me I saw him this morning I pray that you see him too well Albert Trevino but I'm talking about God that you may see him too because when that trial and that tribulation comes you've got to be rooted and grounded so that you may be able to comprehend be mindful of this song that I heard Apparently it's an older song, but I'd heard it for the first time this week. And it said, didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the winds and they hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? Didn't I walk right beside you so that you wouldn't fall? Heavenly Father, I pray right now. Those in the sound of my voice, Lord, if they don't have that firm-footed, rooted, and grounded understanding, I pray you would speak to them now. And may I just say, if anyone wants, I'll pray now or later. You saw me come to the altar. It's an open altar. Do not pass up an opportunity to find firm footing. Do not pass up an opportunity to see Jesus Christ face to face. So, Heavenly Father, those that are in the sound of my voice now, I pray you speak to them and encourage them. Yes, Lord, I pray you convict and convince them too. I pray that you would establish and strengthen. I pray you'd make us mindful of the scriptures, the many scriptures that we've heard today. They now have been planted. Oh, glory. Oh, yes, Lord. Seed oh, song. Jesus. That seed, seed has been yes. planted, and then yes. that seed yes. is underground. Yes. That yes. seed is the nourishment which grows the root. Glory. If you can't see that, you're blind. God, I pray that seed be planted today, and it be nourished by you, the great God Jehovah, by your spirit. Strengthen and establish. As we seek your face, and as we turn from our wicked way, and then as we seek and we knock, oh Lord, I thank you that you're there and waiting and willing to answer. So the trials that come, Lord, the testing of our faith, it produces the endurance in our souls and we thank you. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to thank him for a trial or a tribulation. I know how to thank him for the outcome. I know how to thank him in all things. I just thank him. And I pray you do the same today. So Lord, as we're dismissed from this place, may we take this word that we've heard and put it into yes. practice yes. in the yes. fields yes. of the harvest yes. and the world in which yes, we Lord. walk. Yes, Lord. Lord, as they wake, put a song of joy in their heart. As they walk, put scriptures in their mind and may they speak to someone life words today. May they be strengthened and established. May they be rooted and grounded. 
May they understand and comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of your love towards us as we see in your love. The love of Christ. God, I thank you. That immeasurable fact that you died when you wanted to live. God, your love for us is immeasurable. I pray you would speak to the hearts of your people that love. Yes, Lord, ask someone this week, do you love me more than these? And may they say yes, that I am rooted and grounded in your love. In Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. You're dismissed. Amen.